Hi, and welcome to Tim's Garage. I know people are stuck at home as a part of COVID-19 and making sure that we're doing the right thing and self-isolating. And so I thought I'd release a video, give people something to watch. I actually finished those, this video months and months ago, but I wasn't happy with the outro clip. So I'm gonna refilm that, but I wanna show you a little bit about why this video has taken so long and what I have to deal with anytime I wanna look at my shed. Firstly, I want you to show, just to show you, I guess, the what my shed looks like um, most of the time. When I open up the doors, this is, there's Fexus, it's sitting right there, but it is under a lot of stuff. Um, and I wouldn't be joking if I actually said it's even has a toilet that is sitting on top. It's got a portable toilet sitting there. Lots of stuff that's sort of sitting dumped on top of the engine, which makes it a bit hard to work with, but there are things that are a part of the project as we move forwards here we see we've got some um, clips for the fuel system and for the return line you can see some heat shielding up there that'll go on it eventually um, other bits and pieces just sitting there that have been ordered that sort of tend to sit there brackets and stuff for brakes and all sorts of different different stuff silicon there for the intercooler kit system and all that sort of stuff so there is stuff um, some nice horns sitting there hidden away if you can see them yeah some air horns they're gonna be great we'll mount them as well um, but to get into my shed is quite a journey at the moment and it seems to flood every time it rains and so um just the first part of it nothing towards the back but um I guess I'll just show you a little bit about why some of these projects are taking so long. The reason I've got no space is I keep buying stuff. Uh, you can see I've bought a, there's a motorbike there, which is partly for the kids. I'll say it's for the kids. It's not for me, honest. Um, just finished this last week putting this thing that's all hidden under bits and pieces now. But you can see that black quad bike. Um, brand new engine that was actually a bit of fun that was an old bike that we got given by a friend who was moving house and had sort of bought it with the idea of doing it up um, you can see it came with an engine I think that one was installed with it there's another engine back there that wasn't working got another diff uh, axle there with um, slicks on it so we might put some PVC on that and um, do some drifting around the, the house with that which would be fun but you can see I keep buying stuff so we've got the the blue little quad bike there which was for the kids which is all buried just by boxes and stuff then we've got the other quad bike then we've got a motorbike so we're all good for one day when we're allowed to go camping we'll do that um, but to get to the car is a bit of a, an ordeal so um let's do that first and then we'll see what we can do On this episode of Tim's Garage, we're going to install the turbo on Fexus. What we're doing is mocking up where the turbo stuff's going to go. We've got a, a loose mock up, there'll need to be some fine tuning with some tack welds um, of where the turbo can fit on this side of the car. We've swapped sides, originally we we're going to get this side, but decided. I was going to go down and under with the dump pipe, but I reckon I can go up and over with the dump, which makes this side the, the only choice really, because there's um, brake boosters and everything on the I'm staring at the, the engine on the left hand side, um, if I'm staring at it, and the only space is on the right hand side, so we're going to go down, like over the engine and down that way. Um, we've got a piece of the dump pipe already that's beautifully wrapped. Uh, with heat resistant stuff, I've got more heat resistance, so whatever we do, we'll, we'll wrap and try and move that heat out of the engine bay as quickly as we can. Um, the what I've done is mounted the turbo on a mock sort of set of um, yeah pipes that are decently tacked. They're tacked much more than I usually would, but because they've got a turbo sitting on it, I want them strong enough that it actually hold. And I'm about to mock up this side of the exhaust as well that, that'll run down low and then up again across that because of the nature of uh, that it's a it's a decent amount of space to go i'm also going to use a flexi joint or a, 
I know they're not called a flexi joint, I know they're called something else, but I can't remember what it's called, so I'm just going to call it a flexi joint because that's what I remember. Um, which is cool. Uh, I'm all out of argon gas, so I'm MIG welding everything and grinding and MIGing and grinding and cutting and grinding and MIGing and grinding much more than I should, but it's alright. <laughs> So what I'm looking at, right, these are just those serious, I said I did some pretty serious tacks on there. Um, there's some pretty bulky tacks on this thing. The reason being that that's the exhaust manifold in there. Can't quite get it in there. But anyway, that fits straight under the exhaust manifold that's been reversed. Um, as I said, you know, the, the left one is on this side, so instead of shooting backwards, Instead of shooting backwards, it shoots forwards. It comes out there into our awesome turbo. Um, it's a twin scroll turbo, so squin, twin scroll flange, which could, should give us the V8 rumble still, which is what I was after. That is sitting pretty nicely. This bit's a bit high. I need to play with this dump. So this dump's you know, shooting off up into the air. At the moment, I, I want to bring it up and then this way. So I've got an assortment of 45 and small bends and more bends and all sorts of stuff to try and um, get that up and over to clear this. Um, there should be plenty of space to clear that. And then we'll go down this nice little cavity down there, go under the car and then um, just either pass the gearbox or whatever will cross over and because the exhaust on the, is on the other side of the car, we will connect up to that. But before I do too much more here, I want to get the second pipe organized for this because once I've done that, I can remove our radiator, which is just here to make sure I'm not for, for clearance issues. You know, there's some hoses and stuff that I'll be wary of. Um, and we'll go from there. some fittings from the exhaust placed.
that's um, that's pretty good. Sitting there, dumps there. You can see the these are tacked and they're pretty terrible welds to be honest, but that's all right. Comes out of the exhaust manifold, a couple of different angles, trying to give the alternator a bit of space. Runs across there the flexor joints so they can heat and shrink up into the twin scroll. Um, the dump, we're going to chuck another angle on that dump um, to, to give us some more clearance. And we come across there and then down into the R. Um, once the dump's mocked up into that, then I will, um, yeah, we'll pull it, pull it all off. I'm going to add some, got some clamps over here. Add some clamps down in strategic places so I can actually take all this off if I ever need to. So a couple of strategic plot spots for that and then the, the idea will be um, V-band here, the V-band about here, um, which is very nice looking V-band too I must say. Um, a couple of V-band clamps to pull that off that means the dump comes off there can pull all the piping off the front if I need to do anything to the car or with the engine or whatever. And um, yeah, but that's a full day getting all that sort of mocked up and I'm pretty happy with it. Cool. there's a better way to do this but all I've done is very high tech put a glove on taped up that end and I actually filled this thing with water to see if any of the welds were leaking none are le oh there was one it's leaking so I've just patched that a little bit more ground the welds back and that actually looks pretty good I need to gasket where the old O2 sensor is um, this is where the new O2 sensor is going to go that's that bung's welded in really well we re repurposed that we're going to give that a quick coat of some sort of paint then we will wrap it in um heat wrap the stuff that came off the old one we'll reuse that because we love to reuse stuff saves the monies
it has been probably three months since we started putting the turbo kit on. Um, the main reason is I started a new, new job and it's been Ballarat winter. Ballarat winter is very wet. Don't have a lot of space in the shed, so I've got to get everything out to do any work on it. But the other job, other part of my new job is I actually have employees, and so as the boss, um, they're my number one priority. So I've been looking after them, which means that my own little hobbies and projects have been put on hold. But weather's fined up. Everyone's out of the shed. Got a couple of days off. Let's finish putting this turbo in the car. Oh, snug. Just lifting up the engine so I can get the exhaust manifolds on. Once the exhaust manifolds are on, then run the manifolds across to where the turbo sits. We'll mount the turbo, the dump pipe, filter. Then I'm going to mount the oil system for it. Um, this is kind of the final mock-up. Once that's mocked up, then we can start looking at things like the um, intercooler piping set. But we want to get the turbo mounted for now in its exhaust side, dump pipe side and oil side and we'll get that done today. Now if I was really going for like a professional world class no expenses spared build colour matching is important. If you're on a budget and you're trying to use what's in the shed and you're ordering stuff on eBay and getting some stuff from some mates you end up with um, a bit of a rainbow flavour of a bit of a rainbow looking heat wrap setup. Um, the white stuff we already had, the black stuff we bought, the dirt brown stuff was given to us by a mate and just ran out of the black wrap. So the most contrasting colour but the shortest stuff for this band is there and there's still a couple of gaps but well that's all right this, this side gets hidden away it's not ideal like if i was going to spend lots of money on this i would do it much nicer but we're trying to do it on a budget but at the same time want it to work so don't want to do shortcuts it's heat wrap it's designed to get rid of the heat the function works it's just not pretty. Everything else should be fine. So here it, it's all should be fine. It just doesn't look good. But um, if someone was paying us to do a job, or if I was doing something that I really wanted to show off all the time, definitely would spend the extra dollars. But I'm trying to do this cheap. So back into it. It's awesome, but there has been quite a bit of learning along the way for what has been the first um, custom made exhaust manifold turbo setup that I've ever done totally from scratch, totally with my own bare hands. So I want to talk you through some of the learning so you can avoid some of the mistakes that, that I made. 
So I want to get a couple of things out of the way straight up. The first being uh, just around the welds. We reversed the exhaust manifold so they faced forwards because I didn't want to have to buy um, the exhaust plate that goes against the, the um, engine block and also that so the manifold and, and then have to create something from scratch because we'd, we were trying to do this on a budget. The other part is that the welds were really ugly. Um, I thought it was because I didn't have the TIG welder. I thought I prepped them well but one of the things that I learnt which I had somebody who'd done this multiple times just walked in and just said, oh, you didn't do that. I was like, oh, of course. Um, you'd know if you've ever bought brand new disc rotors that when you get the rotors, they've got an oil covering on them so they don't rust. The same with steel. I didn't know that. I just assumed that yeah, the steel that I'm used to using has been sitting in the shed forever. When you buy steel and gets delivered often, it's got a, a oily coating. That meant that when I'm trying to weld it, it's trying to penetrate through an oil and the welds were just... I'm not the greatest welder in the world and I'm happy to own that, but I just had so much trouble trying to weld this stuff. Um, when I was using older material, it welded fine. The newer stuff I just couldn't weld and I was wondering, if it, did I get cheap metal, it's from overseas and it's not a good quality or is it just a bad batch or what's going on? Totally user error, happy to admit it. So. Um, Next time, when you, if you're ever doing this, make sure you, you clean it really well, clean the material. Like I, I would do, use a, um, I'd use a wire brush and clean off the rust often and, and give it a prep, but in doing that, just the wire brush wouldn't get the oil or to get the, the surface stuff. It wouldn't go to, I just needed to use a, a, a um, grease and wax remover or a, um, use some thinners or something, some sort of material just to get rid of that stuff, clean it up, and then uh, it'll be good to go. So. Uh, now that I know that, hopefully my welds will pick up. Uh, ideally, I would have made gone and bought argon gas and done that as well. But when I started this project, we just had we're at argon. I just bought a whole fresh bottle of uh, MIG welding uh, gas, and so I wanted to use that. So that's why I MIG welded the whole thing from start to finish. Um, the other thing that I learned is just have a go. I have, I'm not going to make any apologies about having a go. If I mess up, it's a part of the learning process. All about it. This is a DIY channel. It's a DIY project. I'm not going to pay someone else to do something when it's DIY. There is an exception, and that'll be in the next video where we start putting the intercooler kit on it. I can't weld aluminium. Um, it's just a recipe for disaster. So I am going to get somebody, get a friend who knows how to weld aluminium. It's very good at that. You, you would have seen through my other videos that that's always been the case. I've never learnt how to weld aluminium. I need a different type of TIG welder. If I had enough money um, and time, I would learn and would love to do that. But at the moment, I don't, so I'm going to get a professional to come in. Um, a friend who works with that sort of material all the time. We'll mock it up together. He'll go and do all the tack welds. We'll bring it back and then we'll, we'll test fit it. And then he'll finish it up and, and run all the beads and stuff, which will be fine. So from the front, this is essentially what the, the car will look like. Again, nothing's fitted properly and I want to just put the uh, radiator in just for looks. In front of that will sit a, an intercooler uh, for the turbo system. And you've got your big green-eyed sort of beast sitting there. When it comes time to put everything back in, I've got a, a second one on order, a cheaper one, that's a HKS um, pod filter, but I've got a cheaper filter coming that will actually need to be bent in a little bit because the light just sort of, just doesn't, doesn't quite fit there. So um, yeah, just there'll be a second filter, same size and everything else that'll fit in there uh, for that pod and that will allow um, for the lights to go in properly. But as soon as we get anywhere and we want to show it off, we'll pop out the light and um, pop in our green eyed thing. I possibly could have, there's a little bit of space here, so maybe I could have gotten that turbo angled a little bit more uh, onto that space, but it's it's hard to be honest, like that's when you're, you're sort of trying to tack it all together and get it all to fit, that, that's a um, pretty difficult process. So um, having said that, I'm happy with the result and how it played out and how it looks at the moment. The um, exhaust manifold runs out there and as I said I was going to put a joiner on it you can see the joiner there 
there's the joiner so if I need to undo it I undo that goes through there's a flexi or a bendy sort of piece of uh, movement in that exhaust which goes up to um, a twin scroll manifold there same out of the, the other side uh, scroll is down uh, the flange is down there and that goes into that which at the moment like that is rock solid uh, because of that but we will um, be running probably from a, a bolt similar to there I would say we'll run a just another bracing piece just for a little bit more strength uh, for that turbo just to help hold that turbo in place uh, water coolant lines we're still working out where to get the water pick up from um, that's just because cool, looks like it fits and that is yeah that is a thermostat I just don't know if that's a pressured side or not um, and then I'm still working out where to run the other side what I did buy was a, a bung just an aluminium bung that fits I think that's a dash six um, dash six line which I was thinking I could possibly run that into the radiator but I don't know pressure wise where the pressure runs because I say I want the water to be flowing so I need to work out where the, the pressure comes out of the, um, the engine pressured through that system and then back into if the radiator is not uh, there's pressure in it but it's a lower pressure then it'll flow and that will work oil relocation kit gives us a pickup that's where the old oil filter would have fitted and it was just starting to get tight and it's getting really close to exhaust um, lines and everything else I'm trying to get stuff clear of that as much as I can and so that runs to a pickup which just sits down there and underneath that means that um get in there without doing too much crazy stuff the reason I have this and so that will sit you see that if I start bringing the camera up to sort of drive line level you see that the filter won't sit down too far there's no huge risk of knocking the filter off you know you're going to hit um, other parts before there but that's where the that oil relocation kit just means it's a simple drop down change for the filter when that time comes from underneath the car just crawl under and undo it which would be great and out of that also runs our oil feed line which I've put a little bit of heat shielding on it um, and used the high tech plastic cable ties because that's how you go when you're heat shielding um, obviously temporary so we'll put some metal ties on that one but I just wanted to see if it would work I've just cut some um, yeah it might have been the dash 4 stuff and put it on there just to give it some kind of um, yeah shielding but that runs nicely up into our turbo it then runs down through a rubber a hydraulic rubber um, return line which comes down and fits it back into there which is very very nice um, from there we've got um, the actual dump pipe uh, I probably didn't need double V bands on this but in some ways I'm also happy I did but the idea being um, I want to be able to it already had a V band flange on the turbo itself which is great so I'm able to um, repurpose that put a second one up here um, which I could have put anywhere the main reason being that the last there's three V bands the last one's down there I possibly could have put one down there or put it you know, lower um, so that could have been one piece but I just thought if I can remove here remove a section here so once again I probably could have made that lower but if we remove that section um, undo the things I can remove the whole turbo system easily without having to crawl under the car but everything fits really nicely very happy with it and um, yeah that's that's the um, yeah, and that's the turbo system in the car so uh, what have I learnt from this project so far this this part of the job um, firstly, this is an incredibly detailed and 
pretty extensive DIY project. Not, it's not just a, an engine swap, not that an engine swap's easy, but it is um, incredibly detailed and incredibly fiddly trying to make it all work. We're, we're working with um, all kinds of things that, that I hadn't expected to take so long. Things like fabricating, things like ordering parts. Um, you remember the sump? There's an episode where the sump I had to get a new one of those and it's still not bolted in properly it's it's bolted in with the bolts i had but it didn't come with bolts so i need to order um i've got the bolts i've been driving around with for probably over 12 months sitting in my glove box i need to go to a bolts place and i can't even remember how many of what size i need now so i need to um either crawl under or pull the engine out and redo that so i'll put the sump back on properly um we are like i'm almost at the point now with this where once I get the intercooler piping done, it's it's getting close to sort of serious business. We'll get the sump on, we'll get the auto um, sorted out and the electrical and fuel. Then we're actually able to start the car, which would be awesome. After that, then we've got to look at things such as the drive shaft. We've got to get the tail shaft put in properly. And once that's in, we'll be um, ready to take this thing for a bit of a spin. The, um, what's next is that you'll see here I've got, um, you see I've got the, just an eBay fuel kit. Uh, the reason, the reason I went for an eBay kit, um, number one is the, uh, these AN fittings are incredibly expensive. I know you can get what you pay for sometimes, but some, like often, some of those, if it's just a simple fitting, it'll work um it'll actually work fine the, the the oil relocation kit um had fittings on it and it cost 100 bucks in total for the whole kit to to move from where it sits down there to where it you can see the the plugs down there and the, the oil feed that comes out of that um the and, and once again if you're seeing that they're cable tied on you are correct and that will get changed to metal metal ties of course um, the but the, I bought a, two more fittings for that and the two fittings cost a hundred dollars just for the fittings that kit itself came with four so while you get what you pay for and fittings are, are good to get the proper AN you know brand name stuff if you can afford it sometimes when I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing uh, rather than and we do live in regional victorious now so it's it's not like I can whip down to the part shop. When I went to get those fittings, I tried three shops and they were all out. I tried to buy some hose um, for, I can't remember what that was for, but I bought some AN dash hose. Oh, that's right, it was for, um, for uh, 50 shades. It was, um, we got some, yeah, I ran a, an oil line, uh, a breather line on that. I needed a long, extension set of braided line and that I ended up having to buy it online um, getting it shipped because I did try local as I I do uh, once again they didn't have it in stock so sometimes buying eBay works so that'll be probably the next episode that'll come out is we'll plumb the fuel system up you can see I've got if the lighting will work for me there's yeah it's not going to work very well um, you see there's one dash line on there we've been able to fit on to um, the existing fuel line which is all good bought an adapter and a, um, a socket for that and then we can turn that into braided line and run that to um, up to our fuel system here ta-da there's the other end of that we're all it's actually looking like it's all going to work for us which is really nice to be able to have some braided um, yeah, line to join that up and then we'll do the boot end, which while we're here, a bit of a tour of the shed, the messiness that is the shed. Um, so no room back here, just sort of fit behind the car and really got to suck it in if you want to walk to get to anything over there. But um, if we walk in here, once again, about 12 projects on the go at the same time, you can see them that I've actually been working on the fuel pump there and we're able to take the fuel pump off Lexus off the um off the Lexus and mount that 
to what is the XF in-tank fuel um, pickup, which was a simple hose with a, a filter on it. So we've been able to do that and take the wiring, a uh, little bit of little bit of fiddling, um, and trying to put as much heat proofing and shielding and stuff on that. Um, and I did a bit of research on what epoxy to use, put it through there. But we'll talk about that more in the next episode. But um, yeah, that's the the next project. We'll try and fit that in the back. But once again, I've got to move a birdhouse, an old swimming pool, and about 12 discarded boxes just to get to that, which is, I said, that's just life at the moment. Inside Fexus, you can see um, it's a braided hose, another clamp for the other end of the exhaust pipe, um, another joiner for the exhaust system. I wanna, I'm sure that'll flex a bit. You can see the intercooler piping sitting over there, um, ready to go in, which is good. Um, that's all the pieces that we need for that, which will be really, really good. Um, more fittings. We've got a HDI hybrid development. These guys are awesome. Um, a boost controller, which would be cool. Full electric super boost controller, which would be great. Another joiner, which will go on the exhaust to fit that stuff in. Um, lights, you can see we've actually run the, uh, the loom. is actually sticking out there, ready to go. Um, it may have to go in and out a couple of times, but we've actually fitted the loom through into the car. Yeah, so while it may, uh, the videos have been coming out, it has been quite a bit of work done on the car, uh, mostly by myself, but we've had a few guys in, I had a, a day where I had um, Josh and Ben and Tim come in and give me a hand, uh, which is really good fun. So we're looking forward to you know, having some other mates to give us a hand from time to time, but, um, but mostly I have done that myself. But yeah, there's times when it, it's really important to have friends give you a hand when you, you run out of capacity. I will be asking a friend to weld up the intercooler side of it because I can't weld aluminium. So pulling in some favors there. Uh, but once that's done, the goal is, uh, or the goal always was, by the end of 2020 to have this car running. Um, I reckon I've said that for the last two years in a row. But that is the goal and we'll keep working on it. So there will be some more videos coming out around Texas. Uh, what we're doing with that and how we're making it work, but um, yeah, look while you guys are staying in home while you while we're all trying to do the right thing, can I just encourage you to maybe find a project in the shed? You can order lots of stuff online if you can get it local, that's great. But like I said, sometimes you can't get it local, um, so making sure that that if I can get stuff in Australia, I'll always order it from Australia to support our own at this time within the pandemic that's taking place through our nation. But look, I really hope this video has encouraged you to have a go as well. Um, to dust off the old toilet that was sitting on your engine and, um, and do some DIY sort of stuff. I gotta say, I'm really enjoying to, to jump into the motorbikes a little bit. This, um, this little, if I can get in the shot, that little project, that little black bike has been just a little ripper. Um, a brand new engine in it. Um, Body kit, a couple of bits and pieces, a bit of fiddling around, and the kids have got an awesome thing for kids. Um, we all have an awesome thing to have a bit of a ride on from time to time, which is pretty cool. And making the most of while we're home, just to, to make sure we're doing our part, we're staying indoors where we can, we're staying within our home, our house, uh, but when the weather's nice, we're gonna do some stuff outside as well. Uh, look, there will be some more videos to coming in, coming out as time goes. Uh, for those that love the show because of the MPS, MPS is still running, running really well. Um, it's been a great car. We're probably getting to the point where there's not too many more videos I can do on that. And we're probably getting to the point in its life where it's time to, um, to move it on to another owner that can enjoy the car a bit more just at a different season of my life at the moment and not getting, not able to use it to its full capacity. It pretty much is a race car, of course, um, which is a bit of a waste using that as a daily commute. So if you are interested, hook me up. Um, yeah, more videos to come. Stay safe, stay inside, do some projects in the shed, and we'll see you next time on Tim's Garage.